Quick disclaimer, I was working on this video all the way back in June before Boys in Blue came out, so there's a few things in the video where I'm working with old information. I did try my best to try to update a few things here and there to read a bit better, so that's all up to date, but just so you know. And with that said, enjoy the video. With Payday 3's second DLC, Boys in Blue, just a week away at the time of recording, I figure now is the right time to figure out where exactly the live-action short film, Follow the Money, fits into the broader Payday timeline. So, let's get into it. Before we begin proper, let's take the time to quickly recap where the story of Payday is right now. After riding off into the sunset with their ill-gotten gains in 2018, the Payday gang enjoyed a happy retirement, that was until a cabal of victims of past Payday Gang robberies came together to take out the gang while they're in retirement. A group composed of Ralph Garnett, Mason Laurent, John Concord, and Patricia Shark. Despite that Concord is the last man standing out of this original group, having Garnet and Shark killed with Mason being either dead or in jail by the end of Touch the Sky, we're going to be taking a closer look at Shark, seeing as that it was one of her banks that was robbed in the video. Now, a quick summary of how the events of Follow the Money played out. The video follows an armored transport carrying money to a Golden Shark bank, where we see a man waiting out front while he and the guards for the truck appear to be more on edge than usual for a drop-off. Some time passes, then the gang enter the bank, masks on, taking over control. They clear out the drawer of cash and then head into the vault where they grab and clean out the rest, leaving behind dyed packs of money. The cops then arrive, or at least people who I assume are cops, seeing as that they just appear and there's no standoff out front, or police markings on them, and them not caring about the endangerment of civilian lives, but they're probably just a fast response SWAT team. An alternate theory is that they may be mercenaries paid to kill the gang, like at the beginning of Payday 3, but until proven otherwise, I'm just going to stick to them being cops. A shootout ensues, and the gang makes off in a getaway car, but not before making off with everything the bank has. The video cuts to black, but then ends on Mac opening a bag of cash from the bank, saying it's payday. Analysis-wise, let's go over the facts that we can gleam off context clues and how the video is given to us. We can easily assume that this man here is the bank manager, judging by his baldness and the fact that he has the key to the vault gate on him. We can also assume that judging by how on edge he is, along with there being two other armed guards on what should be a routine job, and that no one is commenting that the Payday Gang is back once things go loud, I'm saying it's safe to assume that this takes place after the gang made their return with the Secure Capital bank robbery in No Rest for the Wicked. We can also ascertain that this robbery happens at 10 a.m., assuming that this cash drop-off was at 9 a.m. when the bank opened. Now comes the setting. Seeing as that this is a golden shark bank, but it doesn't visually match the bank from the game, we can assume two things. Either A, this is the golden shark bank heist from the game, but seen through a different lens, or B, this is a separate branch of golden shark that the gang is robbing, after their first hit on the main branch. I'm inclined to believe that the latter option is correct for a few reasons, but chief among them being Mac's appearance at the end of the video. If this is meant to be the robbery from the game through a different lens, then I find it a bit odd we're taking a bag straight from the robbery to Mac as to what it looks like paying him, even though timeline-wise the gang wasn't introduced to Mac until after the robbery and at the beginning of 99 Boxes. And if we try to make it out that the gang is paying Mac for 99 Boxes, then why are we robbing a bank to pay him? Wouldn't he be paid when we sell the quantum computer parts? Not to mention that Payday has pulled a similar stunt to this with Payday 2. In episode 1 of the web series, the gang robs the First World Bank, which is listed as being in Washington, D.C. However, going off of the game and Payday the Heist, we know that the First World Bank we go through in the game is located in New York, not D.C. The simplest explanation for this, and for Follow the Money, is that these are two separate heists robbing different branches of the same bank. So, with the clues put together, we have this for the series of events. We have a Gensec armored transport dropping off a large amount of cash to a branch of the Golden Shark Bank between the hours of 9 and 10 a.m., sometime after the death of Patricia Shark. The cash is most likely waiting for distribution to other branches, but during that time in the lower security vault compared to the one in the main branch. It's easy pickings. The gang gets wind of this score, most likely from Mac, and hits the bank, tying up sieves and setting up a drill on the vault, 
and to make sure no one intrudes on their robbery, locking the front door of the bank, which should really be a feature in the game. A silent alarm is tripped, tipping off a fast-acting NYPD SWAT team who clears out the adjacent buildings before moving in. The gang empties the cash drawers and the vault, avoiding the increased security measures by ripping up and leaving the die-packed money, which may be small branch bank procedure going off Secure Capital Bank. However, this may also be another case of anti-payday measures taken by Golden Shark after the hit on their main branch. As the gang is about to make off their loot to the getaway car, the police arrive and the gang takes them on. Dallas notably picks up two tied hostages to use as shield while using his rifle, which would also be a cool feature for Payday 3, having them die as collateral in the shootout. Wolf sets off smoke grenades and the gang is able to make an escape. Later that same day, we see Mac collect his cut of the score for his facilitation fee and the video ends. Seeing that as of the time of this recording, we haven't had any further contact or work from Mac, it's safe to say this heist would have to take place after we meet Mac in 99 boxes, but also after Miss Shark's death after the nine main heists. It was simple back when the game first came out that this heist just simply happened after the main nine, but with the other two legacy heists and syntax error, that throws a wrench into the timeline. However, going off the inclusion of Mac in this heist, I'm going to say that this job is at the farthest end of the Payday 3 timeline for the time being, which leads us to where the timeline is right now. There is no real indication of what time of year the gang makes their return to crime. However, there is a newspaper from the opening cutscene of Payday 3 which says that more heat is coming in the weather, which we can assume means that it could be mid to late summer when the gang returns. However, with the game releasing in September, and there being no real solid dates in the game, we can carry on with the assumption that it's in summer, Payday 3 most likely still keeps to a real-world one-to-one timescale. There's no real difference if the game starts in summer versus fall. All it means is that there's more time in between heists, which you can say is more realistic, but it makes no change to the sequence of events. So, here's what we have. Late 2023. Attempts are made on the lives of the Payday gang in retirement, sending the survivors to the winds, leaving a majority of the gang unaccounted for. The original four of Dallas, Hoxton, Chains, and Wolf, along with Joy, are worn by Shade and brought to New York. The first job the world would know the Payday Gang are back is no rest for the wicked. During the course of the remainder of the year, the Payday Gang pull off eight more heists, which lead to the death of Patricia Shark, CEO of Golden Shark. In late November, the gang pulls off two more jobs by their old handler and friend, Vernon Locke. In early December, the gang robs Scry Digital, making off with the encrypted drone servers and the AI sins. And continuing the real-world timeline, in early May, Dragon makes contact with the Payday Gang after spending the previous year in his hideout in the Swedish mountains. June 29th, the Payday Gang robbed the Bronx Police Department for Vlad, retrieving his seized gold and other police assets. August 12th, Shade reaches out to Dragon for any updates on still-living heisters, where she reveals their plans to break out Houston, and as for another heister's location down south who brutally killed three gangsters. August 19th, the Payday Gang infiltrate the New York Supreme Court and break out the wrongly imprisoned Houston. Late August 2024, the Payday Gang is contracted to rob five stores in the Diamond District. The job is contracted by Beckett, who is doing a favor for his friend after being ripped off on a wholesale diamond deal. After the heist, the Payday Gang return to planning their downtown stock exchange heist to hit Concord where his money is. And that's about it. Of course, I can be wrong about my theories with the SWAT team or Boys in Blue seeing that they're not out yet, but if you like this more analytical timeline video, let me know. I had fun making it. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment. Let me know if there is anything I got wrong or when you think the heist takes place in the timeline. I'd like to see your thoughts. Subscribe if you like my videos and hit the bell so you don't miss new ones. That's all I got for now. See you guys. When the leaves are falling down yeah. Oh, and all the pretty flowers Slowly wither to the ground